are coming to the conclusion of the first part of the Nightfall saga, Nightfall itself, as John Paul prepares to take on Bane. This episode, we are covering Detective Comics 665 and 666, along with Batman 599. Detective Comics issues are all written by Chuck Dixon, with pencils by Graham Nolan, lettering by John Costanza, and are edited by Darren Vincenzo and Scott Peterson, with the Batman issue being written by Doug Mensch, with pencils by Jim Aparo, lettering by Ken Brusniak, or Brusniak, and edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel, credited as Vaccine Creator, and the legendary Denny O'Neill, with all three of the issues in question, ink being inked by Scott Hanna, and having colors by Adrienne Roy. We open with Batman 2 and Robin, in the middle of fighting an array of various goons. Robin reflects on their situation and his concerns about his new partner and his very violent impulses that they didn't really have much time to work on before, you know, he became Batman. As if to call attention to this, Robin has to physically restrain Batman 2 from beating a goon into a coma with his own sledgehammer. Meanwhile, at Stately Wayne Manor, Bruce calls Dr. Ken Solving's office. She's out at the Drake place, which is right next door. So, rather than drive or having Alfred drive him, he decides to roll himself over in the wheelchair. On the way, he spots an armed man hiding in the late landscaping, smoking a cigarette. Meanwhile, unknown to Bruce, and for that matter the occupants, two armed men in ski masks are lurking inside the Drake house and sneaking up on Jack and Chandra. Bruce, erroneously, but not without good reason, thinks that the guy lurking in the bushes is in fact working for Bane. Speaking of which, elsewhere, Bane is discussing his expanding control of Gotham's underworld with his crew. All that remains after their bloody, violent purge is to get control of the unions, and Bane's got an angle on that. At the Union at the Gotham Skydome, Batman 2 has information that the gangsters who speak of the devil, or the bat, Run the are running the unions are meeting in the venue Skyroom. Against Robin's protestations, Batman 2 has decided he will make his presence known. So John Paul heads to the venue as Robin wonders what the hell he's doing. Both in the sense of of you know John Paul and also in the sense of you know himself as Robin. And back at the Drake place, Bruce Coldcox won the one of the goons and reaches the front driveway just in time to see the rest of the goons pushing Jack and Dr. Kinsolving into a windowless van. At the Sky Room, tough Tony Bressy is trying to talk the bosses into meeting with Bane. Now, Batman 2, who is eavesdropping, hears fear in Tony's voice and concludes that Bane has leverage on Bressy, so he decides to jump in. We cut between Batman 2 and Robin fighting the bosses and their bodyguards while Bruce tries to fight the kidnappers. Batman 2 fights without considering Robin's safety or the safety of the gangsters, as Robin has to save one from plummeting from a catwalk to his death. Bruce, on the other hand, is very easily overpowered and barely manages to get the van's license plate. Again, with the goon getting knocked, down to the, knocked off the catwalk and getting abandoned by Batman and having to be rescued by Robin, stick a pin in this. We're going to come back to this later in Night's Quest. As the issue wraps, Batman interrogates Bressy, who reveals that Bane has his kids. With that, in spite of Bruce's prohibition against taking on Bane, Batman 2 is going to confront the man who broke the bat. Batman 499 begins with Batman 2 beating the crap out of Tony Bressy to get him to funnel information to him through a dead drop. Robin is aghast, but doesn't want to blow Jean Paul's cover. There's no need to beat him like, You shut up! Now! Do we have an understanding, tough Tony? Y yeah, sure. You keep the other dons here long enough for me to convince Bane that we're handing over the unions, so he hands over my kids. My kids. And when the release is set, you leave word for me right here. You got it. Then get out of here and start contacting Bane's people. I, I, I'll do it. You know I'll do it. Anything to get my kids back. Forget your kids. You cross me on this, tough Tony, and I'll make you eat your eyes. Holy crap. This is a very pronounced escalation for, for John Paul at this point. 
Um, it gets much higher later, but still, this is a pretty pronounced escalation at this point. In the Batcave, Bruce analyzes a bloodstained piece of mass from a guy he clobbered in the face and finds elements of malaria vaccine in the blood. Yes, Master Bruce, clearly the kidnapper tra regularly travels to places where malaria is a problem. Uh, how many countries is that, sir? At Bane's base, between the news coverage and word on the street, Bane is becoming agitated by the stories of Batman's return. Listen, it's all just fake news. Bruce contacts Oracle about the sample, while Robin returns home and collapses exhausted, not realizing his dad isn't home. Oracle calls Bruce back, letting him know that the goon was from Santa Prisca. She also knows he's in a real chair. Now, it's not made clear with this whether Bruce knows that Oracle is Barbara Gordon or not. It feels like they don't know, but I've been wrong about stuff like this before. If there's evidence from an earlier issue that I've missed about this, go ahead and post in the comments. John Paul shows up and Bruce and his erstwhile successor talk, and it's clear that Bruce hasn't heard from Robin about Tim's concerns. Bruce tells John Paul that he'll be leaving town for a while. After Bruce leaves, John Paul decides to engage in some automatic writing and draws a design. He goes to take it to Harold, but Harold is cleared out. So Bruce, so John Paul decides to build the design, a pair of gauntlets, himself. We cut the next day where Batman 2, in his new spiky gauntlets, picks up the note from Bressy. He's ready to go for Bane and heads off on his own. At the Gotham airport, Selina Kyle tries to hitch a ride on Bruce's fight to Santa Prisca, seemingly with no success. At the handoff, Batman 2 jumps the gun, and while Robin helps Tony and his kids get out okay, the Cape Crusader focuses on Bane's followers, and he very quickly takes down Bird, Bird's Falcon, injuring their wing of the process, Zombie, and Trog. After the fight, when the police show up, Batman 2 berates Robin for calling them. However, back at the Batcave, when they talk again, John Paul is a totally different person with the mask off. On Bruce's plane, Alfred discovers Selina stowed away in a lavatory, and back home, Tim finds Alfred's note. Before we wrap up this issue, the letters column has a few letters singing the praises of Dr. Kinsolving as a character, and hoping she'd be a recurring character fighting her superior to Silver St. Cloud and Vicky Vale. Well... We'll get to that later in terms of how long the character lasts. Detective Comics 666 opens with Batman 2 on patrol alone. He wants to beat Bane, but he doesn't want to do the legwork. Kate Crusader, or rather the successor, drops in on Gord to see if they've learned anything from Bane's crew, but they won't talk. And then Gordon is shocked to see that Batman 2 didn't leave behind his back without him hearing. Bullock and Kish have been working them for close to 24 hours. They're getting nowhere. I don't think they're going to hand Bane up. Never heard of such loyalty in hoods. Where are you holding them? City Detention Center over on Girard, but not for long. The feds are crying for a shot at them. and The governor wants them separated and placed in maximum lockup in a hurry. Not that I blame him. My God! Something wrong, Commissioner? You're still here. So? Normally I turn and you're gone. Who are you, and what did you do to Batman? At the lockup, Bullock tries sweating Zombie without success. And then, together, Zombie, Bird, and Trog talk about whether Bane will spring them. It seems their patience is rewarded when they're supplied with gas masks electronic lock pits, picks, and a note. Shortly later, the guards are hit with a gas attack, allowing the three to break out as Batman 2 looks on from a nearby wolf rooftop. At the Drake home, Tim eats a dinner the housekeeper, Mrs. Zylvain, prepared by himself. Elsewhere, Bullock and Montoya bemoan the escape of Bane's crew as Batman makes his way across town. At Bane's place, the three thank Bane for his plan, his plan which he had nothing to do with. As soon as Bird mentioned the note was only signed B, Bane puts it together. But Bane, who else in Gotham would have a name that starts with B-O? And Batman 2 strikes. Once again, he rips through 
frog, bird, and zombie as if they were just nameless goons, mooks. Finally, John Paul and Bane exchange blows on even footing with the system helping to provide John Paul with the upper hand. So, Bane takes a hit of Venom, which allows him to take control. Batman 2 gets free, but as the issue ends, Bane has Batman dangling from his ankle from a window washer's lift. Is this the end of Riders in the Sky? Well, what this is, is a good setup for the finale of Nightfall, which is where we're going, and also where we're going with Night Quest. Um, Bruce and Alfred have already left for their part of the Nightfall story, Nightfall the Search, in, uh, to chase down Dr. Kinsolving and Jack Drake, and we're really doing some good work building up the split between Tim and John Paul that's ultimately going to lead to Tim Solo ongoing, which was definitely already in the works at this point. Um, along with the ultimate redesign of the bat suit that we're going to see in full next time as we wrap up the first part of the Nightfall saga as we get to the final confrontation between John Paul Valley and Bane. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.